Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I hope you had a great weekend and I hope you enjoyed celebrating Mother's Day with your mom and maybe you even uh, made some of the projects that I posted the other day. So I hope your mom liked whatever it was that you gave her. Let's take a look at our reading for today. Your brother and your friend. I am your brother and your friend. I'm the firstborn of many brothers and you are being changed to be like me. This is an amazing gift. Some children are blessed to have a strong and loving big brother who helps them and watches out for them. But you have the perfect big brother because I am so powerful and I am always looking out for you. Even the best family member or friend can't be with you every second of the day, but I can. I never leave your side. I am the friend who sticks closer than a brother. Don't take my constant presence with you for granted, though. Remember that your big brother and faithful friend is also the king of kings. If you could see just a glimpse of me and all my heavenly glory, you would understand why the Apostle John fell at my feet when he saw me. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever. I want you to bow before me because I am your Savior God. Remind yourself again and again that the gift of salvation is yours forever. And then honor me by telling me how thankful you are for this wonderful gift. So this tells us that Jesus will always be by our side no matter what. You can have many friends in life, but Jesus, and sometimes um, you, your friendship grows apart but Jesus will always be there as your friend. All right, boys and girls, let's take a look at our math for today. Now, before I pull up the pages, I would like to go over um, coins with you because we're going to start a new chapter on money. And maybe you don't remember from last year some of the different coins. So let's take a look at them. This first one here is a penny. And a penny is worth one cent. This is a nickel. And a nickel is worth five cents. And this is a dime. And a dime is worth 10 cents. And those are the three coins that we're going to be working with today. Penny, nickel, dime. So what I want to show you is we're going to be counting some of these coins. And the easiest way to do that is by, and you're going to see in the math pages, is having the coin with the highest value go first. So if I were to put this combination of coins out, I have a dime, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. I have 10, 10, 5, 1. So you see I have the coin that's the highest in value go first, all the way down to the lowest in value. So we have 10, 10, 5, 1. So you see how that goes from the highest amount down to the lowest amount. It's easiest to count your coins that way. So if we have these coins, I would have 10, 20, 25, 
26. Let's try another combination. I'm just gonna get rid of this dime. And I will just put these three. Oops. Oh, that was interesting. There we go. So I have 10, five, and one. So 10, 15, 16. All right, let's look at our math page and see what we have. All right, let's look at the example. Aaron finds these coins in his pocket. Okay, and you'll see that they're all mixed up. We have a nickel, a dime, a penny, a nickel, a penny, a dime, a dime. And it is difficult to count it when they're all mixed up like that. So that's why I showed you if you get a bunch of coins like this, which you're, the problems that you're going to do today will not have them mixed up like this. But um, later in the week, they will be. So we'll have to be organizing them. But um, if you were to get coins like this, you would want to put them from the biggest in value to the smallest in value. So it says, how much money does Aaron find? Put the coins in order from greatest to least value. So up here, Aaron has, we're going to start with dimes, three dimes, one, two, three, right? And dimes are 10 cents, 10, 20, 30. Next, he has how many nickels? Two nickels. Nickels are five cents. Okay, so he has 30, 35, 40. And then he has two pennies. Pennies are one cent. 41, 42. So Aaron has 42 cents. Let's look at the bottom. Okay, so this says count on, find the total amount. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with this coin. This is a dime. So I'm going to put 10. Now 10 and 10 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. 30 plus 10 is 40. 40 plus 5 is 45. 45 plus 1 is 46. 46 plus 1 is 47. 47 plus 1 is 48. So the total amount is 48. And then we make the cent sign by doing the letter C with a line going through it. So there is number one. Let's take a look at the back side to see what's next. <clears throat> okay, I will do a thing one of these with you because it's a little bit different. Circle the coins that make the given amount. Okay, so we're looking for 35 cents and it asks you to circle coins that make 35 cents. Well, I'm going to start with dimes first. I know that one dime is 10, two dimes is 20, we need another dime, 30, and to get 35, I would need a nickel. So you're going to try the same thing for number three and four. 
Number five, let me just read that. Camilla has 52 cents in her wallet. She finds two dimes and nine pennies in her pocket. How much does Camilla have in all? Okay, so the best way to do a problem like this is if she has two dimes, how much is a dime? A dime is 10. She has two of those, right? So for me, the best way to do it is to write the amounts out. You can even put a little circle around it to show like, okay, that's 10 cents. She has two dimes and then she has nine pennies and pennies are Right, pennies are one. Um, and you can put a circle around them if you'd like. And that would be the best way to count how much money she has here. All right, so I'll leave that up for you in case you want to pause it and you can count my money. Or you can draw your money out and do that. 10, 20, and then she has these pennies. Number six. How does sorting like coins and then ordering them from greatest to least value help you find the total amount? Okay, so what that's asking is, why is sorting coins like this from biggest to smallest, why is that helpful when you're finding out how much money you have, right? I think it it would be easier to count it that way from highest to highest number to smallest number than having a bunch of different coins all out of order and um, having to count it that way. So that might be helpful for you when you're answering your question. Let's take a look at the more practice. All right, more practice is just like um, number one on the regular lesson. So you're gonna uh, um, count and find the total amount. Now, this starts with a nickel, and then it goes dime, dime, penny, penny, nickel, nickel, penny. So for me, I would start with the biggest coin in the value. You know, dimes would come first, then nickels, then pennies. So I would start with 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. Did you see how I went from dimes, nickels, pennies? That will help you. You're gonna do the same thing for number two. Number two, um, they took the time to put them in the right order. I wish they would have done that for number one instead of mixing them up. But because it's mixed up, try to start with dimes, then nickels, then pennies. Show one way to make the given amount. Okay, if you had to make 57 cents, um, it's asking you how many dimes you would need, how many nickels you would need, and how many pennies you would need. So I'm going to start with dimes first. We have 57 cents. So if I did five dimes, how much is that? Remember, dimes are 10. So if I had five of them, I would have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 cents. Now I would need seven more cents. So I can do seven pennies because those are one cent. And if I had seven of them, I would have seven cents. So 50 plus seven is 57. You're going to try the same thing for number four. And then I think we have one more page on the back. Let me pull that up. We're almost done.
circle the coins that make the given amount. Okay, for number one and two. So, um, 18 cents, what coins would make 18 cents? 31 cents, what coins would make 31 cents? To match the coins to the total amount. All right, for number three, seven dimes and three pennies, what would that go to? A, B, or C, you would draw a line. Number four, four dimes, one nickel, and four pennies. You would draw a line to what that goes with. Number five, three dimes, one nickel, and three pennies. You would draw a line to what that would go to. Number six, Justin has 30 cents. He finds two coins in his backpack. Now he has 45 cents. What two coins does Justin find? Justin finds a blank and a blank. So what two coins would make, or what two coins does Justin find? And number seven, Malachi had six nickels and two dimes. Noah has five dimes. Who has more money? So when you're figuring this out, you might want to draw out six nickels and two dimes. How much is that? And then you want to maybe figure out how much is five dimes, and then you can figure out who has more money. Let's take a look at religion, boys and girls. see. There we go. All right. Boys and girls, I will be right back. All right. Zoe was being a little whiny and I needed to tell her to be quiet for a few more minutes. Okay. So this is page 211. And this starts a new chapter, chapter 14. And I'm really excited for this chapter because it's going to talk about first communion. And that's the best thing about second grade is learning about first communion. Now, unfortunately, our regular scheduled first communion this year um, could not take place. So your church is going to reschedule your first communion, which is very exciting. So you're still going to be able to make the sacrament. It just will be at a later date. So we're going to learn all about first communion in this chapter. So you're just going to do this page today, and that's it, page 211. Um, you're going to read at the top, and then you're going to answer uh, the questions in this activity. All right, boys and girls, that is all the work. I'm going to stop sharing this for a second because I just wanted to talk to you quickly about your journal. Normally, um, you just print out your journal, but I'm going to try to incorporate cursive into our journal so we don't have extra cursive. So this week, I would like for you to work on writing your journal answer in cursive, okay? So you'll get some good practice with that. So um, today you'll have <clears throat> your journal and write that in cursive and work on your math, money, and religion page. And if you've been following Charlotte's Web, we're almost to the end. There's an additional chapter that's posted on YouTube if you like to listen. And I'll see you at 2 o'clock today for our Zoom meeting. Don't forget to bring a joke. I can't wait to hear what you have. Bye.